Greetings and welcome to tutorial number 7 on LFS 7.10 series. Uh, let's just continue what we were doing. Uh, okay, we installed expect last time. Alright, uh, let's just get into Deja GNU. So, okay, just see what is this. So, we are going to untar the Deja GNU. Okay, let's get into yeah, Deja GNU 1.6. Uh, let's just. Okay, we are into so let's just configure Okay, that's done. Let's just make install I don't know what's wrong with this. I didn't understand why there isn't a make command here. I'm suppose that it's just uh, you you just have to configure the whole thing and directly install. No need to go here and there. Like just come. No need to compile. I suppose. Okay. Let's just go back one step. And then we'll untar our check yeah check 0 0.10 so let's check yeah let's get into check okay uh, we have to, I suppose we have to export some variable here I'm not sure then we can go directly for make make check and okay uh, what we are going to do is we are going to skip this step because it says that it's not mandatory to run the check here uh, what we'll do just that we'll build the package using make and install the package using make install so let's just do it in one command make and and ampersand ampersand and make install okay that's done now we have to install n curses Okay, as it says that NCurses is a library for terminal independent handling character screens. Okay, it's it's what I understood is it's something like uh, what do you say when you configure something from the terminal uh, like uh, how do I say configuring the Linux kernel if you have ever done that. So it gives you a nice little GUI but which is not as proficient as the normal ubuntu or any other linux gui it's uh, a basic version and the navigation is done through the keyboard not via mouse so it's pretty much like that so i guess that that library is in curses which helps us to do all that stuff okay it's done so let's just untar our n curses. Okay, let's get into n curses and sure that gop is found during configuration. Okay, looks like there is something. Now we'll configure it. And I'm 
supposing it's make make install yes okay let's see the bash which is a shell uh, notice here that our linux from scratch os is not going to be uh, the os with a gui or something like that what we are going to do is we are going to give a command line interface which is the bash or sometimes uh, what you see in servers like when you you have to log in through the terminal and pretty much you have to use everything that is via command line argument and you have to what do you say perform operations using the cl interface okay which was a okay let's just make and make install okay that's done now you might be wondering that what are we exactly trying to do okay let me make sure that you understand what we are trying to do we uh, we had a set of programs that needed to be compiled first now uh, we cannot directly compile it because the linux from scratch it's directly the source code it's not the compiled version for your specification or rather your cpu architecture so what we did is we compiled our uh, c compiler that is uh, gcc using our existing system which contains the compiler for gcc and using that we compiled a finalized version of gcc and binutils so that uh, we can set up the environment for gcc then asm like it's something like this the whole code is on in a, hi a higher level language form and you have to convert it into a binary executable format so for that what you need is you need the compiler which converts it from the higher level language to a lower level language such as assembly now assembly uh, i am supposing that there is a tool name as gas that is g assembly and uh, yeah that that's it so what we are going to do is we are going to just take this whole thing and we had made our own compiler and assembler uh, which was the first iteration of binutils and gcc so using those we compile our compiler which is optimized version so that we will have to use it later on and now what we are doing is we are trying to uh, rather we are installing few programs so that we can now compile our kernel and this programs together which will form the whole kind of ecosystem type thing and this whole together package or uh, what do you say the programs as well as the kernel will work hand in hand so that we get a full fledged system okay i i am supposing that you understand what i say anyways uh, what we did here yeah. moving on to bash okay uh, let's just untar our bash okay it's done so cd bash okay now okay uh, prefix tools is uh, rather where we are going to install it now this without bash malloc malloc is a function which is used for the allocation of memory you in the c language so it turns off the bash malloc function which causes segmentation faults okay segmentation faults as in uh, see the whole program that you are running cannot be directly put into ram and put into running mode directly so what you need to do is you need to convert that program into small small chunks or small parts so that it can be loaded into the ram now as you know that linux is a multi user multi uh, thread operating system what we do is uh, what we do is we take the small small processes 
which we put in the RAM, that is a small part of the program, and we run it such that one program gets the chance, after that second program gets the chance, and then the third program gets the chance. So what happens during malloc is, malloc is used for dynamic allocation of the memory. During dynamic allocation, now it says that uh, in the bash, there might be causing some segmentation faults. Now, what are segmentation faults? So the process directly now after the process has done executing the small chunk of uh, code, it goes to another, uh, it goes back to the hard drive and takes out another piece of the program. So what it says that if we use malloc here, there will be some segmentation problems, which means that if we are using, like if you're dynamically, uh, what do you say allocating the memory so while taking some uh, taking some part of the program it won't find the necessary uh, what do you say necessary part of that program that needs to be executed so it will uh, result into something called as segmentation fault or page fault Okay, now we are also it says that running the test suit is not mandatory. Okay, so we are just going to skip this part and we'll just continue with this one. Okay, is it done? Looks like it's not going to take much of the time. That's done. Let's just make make install. Now let's learn what is BZIP. Now uh, for compression, BZIP program is used. Which uh, okay, what is the difference between GZIP and BZIP? GZIP is uh, more like. A tradition version traditional version of compression bzip is a new technology and it gives a more compression ratio so bzip is useful there and yeah technically it's like it gives a better data to computation ratio than gzip like gzip takes more amount of space but the computation is easy whereas bzip takes a less amount of space and the computation is a little bit complex okay it is done yeah let's just put this command yep it's done now let's un get into the previous directory and untar our bzip dot okay Let's just get into bzip okay and now you get it right why have they used this flagged over here when it is a common practice that it comes into the configure file so this i think it it is an alternate method i am not a pro in this kind of stuff but i am just trying to make a point here so looks like we can do it this way also But again, okay, I need to put prefix equal to slash, sorry, tools, okay, and then install it. Anyways, uh, this is the core utils is our last package for this tutorial. Let's just get over with it for showing basic system characteristics I didn't understand what this core utils means but what I understand from core is that it's a kind of important part or the centralized part 
and utils is something like utility kind of so basic system characteristics as in it can be something like the screen brightness or it could be uh, the something like a keyboard keyboard cursor or something like that come on man let's just untar core utils core utils dot that's done let's get into core utils okay now here it says that prefix tools yeah do you see this this kind of stuff so i think it's as similar to this one that is all your what do you say binary executables will be stored in slash tools directory okay here enable install program host name this enables the host name binary to build and install it is disabled by default okay it's something like the host name binary is used to build here by default it's not there okay compilation is now complete the earlier description is not mandatory to run core util in the following command okay again this is not mandatory let's just go for make and make install directly Come on, man! I'm just bored staring at the screen. <laughs> Sorry, you guys, but it's mandatory stuff. I cannot do anything <laughs> in this in this type of situation. Okay, finally. Okay, I I get what core utils means. It's like basic something like the file. What do you say? Proceed. It contains methods which are used to read files. Then you can say hashing is required to uh, what do you say? Prevent data from getting corrupted or detecting corrupted data. Then I am supposing there is some uh, something related to encryption also encryption and security. Also, uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, this who am I utility? Changing the permissions of the file, changing the root user of the file. Uh, what do you say? Manual. That is a man here. it's done anyways thank you guys for watching we'll continue the whole part in the next session till then enjoy this video and thanks a lot bye